All right. Hey, Vision. Come on now. Hey, Vision. Okay, repeat after me. Today's the day. This month is the month. This year is the year. Okay, y'all, when we're singing that time and time again song, God gave me this visual as I stand there in the front row. I got a friend, uh, he, uh, he uh, works in McCannville, and he's got a, a Tesla. Who's ever ridden in a Tesla before? Okay, Tesla's pretty cool. Super fast. Oh, my goodness, they're super fast. The, the tricky thing with a Tesla, though, when I was with my friend Travis, is we were on a trip going through the mountains, and the little indicator on there was showing how much power he had left, and it made me a little nervous because I'm used to seeing gas stations everywhere. I'm not used to looking for Tesla recharging stations. So here's my point. I'm standing here in the front row, and I thought, man, it has been 14 days since I have plugged in my spiritual Tesla into this body. And I don't know if you missed it last Sunday, like Meg said, but to be here in this place and literally to take like this spiritual energy and plug it in to a band, to you, to God's spirit in this place, I need that in my life. Don't be thinking, well, Pastor Matt's just good. He just, his Tesla energy never goes down. Mine goes down too. I know yours does. In fact, if you're watching online today and you're sick or you're out of town, we do need you here and you need to be here. In fact, if you're watching online, I encourage you right now, go ahead and comment. Let us know you're on there. Let us know how we can be praying for you. If you're here in person, I hope your Tesla is being plugged in. I hope you are receiving what God has given out this morning because I was out in the woods yesterday singing that same song time and time again, and honestly, it was okay, and this morning, it was totally different, and that's because of you. I could have been standing here in this gym this morning by myself. Nobody showed up time and time again. I'd sing it. It had been okay, but when the body comes together, God shows up and does something today, this month, this year, he is doing it. Amen. And so before we even start this series, I want you to know that I thought hard about what I wanted to say first before the series, and here's my heart for you. My heart for you is that I want to be a part of growth, spiritual growth in your life this year where your relationship with God would go deeper and be stronger than ever before. I want to be on that journey with you, and I want to help you help other people to also experience God in that way this year so that their walk would go deeper and be stronger than ever before. So I don't know if that interests you, but y'all, it interests me. As I prepared for today, I say, God, I am ready for this year because I don't want any more at 20 or 21 or even 22 and 23. We saw some turn, but in 24, I am believing that God has great things in store and I promise you, I'm not going to miss it. I don't want you to miss it either. And let's go somewhere together. So let me start off with an important question then. Did anybody get anything good for Christmas? Mm, modest results. Let me ask this question. Did anybody get anything that you already are planning on regifting next year for Christmas? Well, you got it and you open it up. Like we, uh, we were at the, uh, the Young Adults Christmas party and, uh, and somebody opened up this, uh, this thing. It's, it's called like potty golf. Like literally, you when you're using the restroom, that you'd have your chance to work on your putting. That's a regifting type gift, right? Okay. Or whether somebody gives us and says, "Hey, I know it's the rage these days to have like sweaters and stuff," and they give you this, and you're like, "I'm not wearing SpongeBob anywhere." Regift. You say, "Yeah, man, I, I got some things already. I need to regift." But what what would you have wanted for Christmas? Would you have wanted some good advice? You're like. Maybe. No, no, no. I'm talking good advice that's like life-changing advice. Advice kind of like maybe uh, a year ago Christmas, if somebody would have said, hey, stock up on groceries because they're going through the roof in price. And you're like, yeah, that's good advice. I should have bought a lot more groceries. Or maybe advice that said, uh, you don't need to save up any money for Panthers playoff tickets. Okay? <laughs> you don't need to do that. It's not going to happen this year. That's good advice. That's good advice. But when you think about advice, I don't know if uh, the, the younger ones in here know about this guy named Warren Buffett, but Warren Buffett is regularly known in our generation as one of the best advisors in finance and business. This guy, Warren Buffett, it was known to him that at one time he uh, had like one of his old wallets that was empty except for one piece of paper that had some stock advice in it. They put it on for auction, hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
Somebody paid for that wallet because it has some advice in it. Then another time, they had an auction, I guess for charity or something, that said, who wants to have lunch with Warren Buffett and pick his brains for an hour? $2.6 million somebody paid for lunch with Warren Buffett because they wanted to get good advice. Now, the reality is I couldn't get Warren here today. He would not answer my calls. He would not come spend time with me. But what's even better is we have advice in here from the king of advice. We have letters in here written by men under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and particularly Solomon. This guy Solomon, who besides Jesus, Solomon was known as the wisest man who ever lived. In fact, the Queen Sheba, wouldn't you like to be called that? That's the Queen Sheba right there. That just like sounds like all powerful and kind of swanky. The Queen Sheba came from miles away to spend time with Solomon because she had heard he was so wise. In fact, I was researching it this week. It said that she brought and gave him over four tons of gold because after she spent time with him, she said, it's, it's just as I heard. In fact, me and Brian talked about it recently, that Solomon, the way he ran things in his organization, his team was ready, his, his, uh, his uh, facilities were ready, his plan was ready, his advice was great, that people were just amazed at him as a leader. The Queen Sheba said, better than anyone I've ever heard from. This advice is incredible. The good news is we get to tap into the advice of Solomon. Because it, got, it got written down for us, and... Today, we're going to start a series called Guardrails. For six weeks, we're going to tap into this concept that life is tough when things are tight. Whether you're on a, a, a highway and it's all tight, whether you're driving around a mountain and it's tight, whether pressure emotionally or mentally or financially is tight, we're not meant to live that way. Things get tight. God wants us to push back and have guardrails set up to make our life better. Now, I'm going to give you a sneak peek, too, because I want you to get excited like I'm excited about where God's going with us, because even after this six weeks, we're going to celebrate something called Ash Wednesday. It kicks off the season of Lent, which is about 40 days before Easter, and in those 40 days, we're going somewhere as a church. We're going to read through a book together, one of the most famous books of all time, The Purpose Driven Life. We're going to spend six weeks together on that topic as we go through Lent saying, God, we want to experience you deeper and more strongly than ever. So that's where we're going after this series. So I want you to know this series, we're pushing some things back, creating some margin in our life so that God can work. So if you haven't got your connection card yet, and actually, Zach, hold that thing up right there. He's got the takeaway. He's got to take. If you don't have your takeaway card yet, pull it out. It's in a chair around you because I'll give you some things today to write down, some verses, some principles that will change not only where your year goes, but literally where the rest of your life goes. If you take the principles that I'm talking about, not because they're mine, not even because they're Solomon's, but because they come from the God of creation. So let's get into this thing. So we talk about this concept of guardrails. Has anybody in here ever helped somebody go through uh, their learner's permit and they learned how to drive a car? Come on, I need somebody to relate with me on that. Me and Meg have been there. In fact, let's take a look at one of our little angels, Elijah. When he um, was, this is actually his first day of driving, so this has been preceded by six to 12 months of stress, okay, <laughs> that uh, we'd have times where me and Elijah, maybe we'd, um, we'd go to the gym and we'd finish up in the gym, and he'd say, hey, Dad, you want, you want me to drive home? And I'm like, mentally, I'm like, yes. In my heart, I'm like, no, man, it's so, it's so stressful when you drive. You're only 15 and a half. And we'd get in the truck and start driving down the road, and it became so apparent to me how narrow Union Road gets down there by Old Carolina Barbecue. And I'm like, oh. And I'm, I'm in this seat with no, with no brake, and he's right here next to me, and we're driving along, and, and, and he's like, Dad, how am I doing? I'm like, move over a little bit, move over a little bit, the poles. He's like, no, I got it. I said, no, you don't got it. Okay, move over. I need some more margin between that telephone pole and the truck. Whew, because we need guardrails in our life to protect us from danger. Now, in, uh, in life, you may see guardrails um, when people are guarding things, Tomorrow night, the Michigan Wolverines will be guarding the end zone in Houston. 
Okay, trying to keep Washington Huskies out, but, but back, to, back to reality, back to reality. In England, you know, you got the big, like, Buckingham Palace, all the guards out there. You got the White House with their guards. You got your house with, you know, Simply Safe or CPI. You know, we guard things that are important to us, and the important things that we guard, like our house, our family, our, our documents, or jewelry, or photos, or money, we, we guard those things, but I hope you also carefully guard your time and your attention, and your passion, these things inside of you that make you unique, you, you have to guard them because life will try to steal them away or try to dampen them. So in fact, our bottom line today, make sure you lock this in. I'd write it down if it was me because I just can't remember everything, but I'd write it down. But the bottom line is above all else, I need to guard my heart. So actually, repeat after me. Above all else, I need to guard my heart. Give me a couple of minutes and uh, I'm gonna try to make a case that, that that is true. That above all else, we need to guard our heart. So in fact, this, uh, this concept of, of guarding things that are important to us. You know, this, uh, this fireproof case, when I had mentioned to my boys I was bringing the fireproof case to church, they were like, the gun case? And I'm like, no, no, no. We're not bringing guns into church and, and opening things up. So, but this fireproof case that, you know, you can't get in, but me and Meg can get in because, you know, we, we guard important things in here like, you know, our will or, you know, old rings and stuff like that. So I thought, man, what could I have in here today that I would guard that is of high value and importance. And of course, it's vision t-shirts, okay? So I was like, I'm just going to kind of toss them out this way. And if you don't have one yet, that's one for you. But in all seriousness, we guard the things that are important to us. So let's look in Proverbs and see what Solomon says about this. If you got your Bible on your phone, pull it up on a Bible app, or we'll have it on the screen. Uh, I certainly hope if you attend our, our church and English isn't your primary language, that you leverage the technology we have to put earbuds in your ear, plug it in your phone, and you can hear my word in words in your language. Okay, that's what we do here at Vision. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's take a look at this. Solomon's writing. He says, listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so don't forsake my teaching, for I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me and he said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart, keep my commands and you will live. So when I hear this, this start to this, this talk, it makes me think of um, sitting on a front porch, maybe like with a grandma or a grandpa. Does anybody have any memories of doing something like that in your life? Sitting on the front porch or wherever you would sit with grandma or grandpa, Honestly, I really don't because my grandfathers both died before I, well, I was of age to know them. And then my grandmothers, one had died and the other one lived far away, so I didn't spend much time with her. But in my mind, I love the thought of sitting on a front porch with someone who's wise. Someone who has the, the battle scars, right? The life experience, the pains, the victories. You'd sit on the front porch with them and you'd say, would you teach me? Would you teach me so I could learn from you? Because, you know, some people say it's good to learn from life experience. I say it's better to learn from other people's life experience. Because if you can learn from them, you can avoid some pain and some pitfalls and live the life God has intended for you. So this is what's happening right here in Proverbs 4. Let's continue in verse 5. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Don't forget my words or turn from them. Don't forsake wisdom. and She'll protect you. Love her and she'll watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom, though it cost all you have, get understanding. So let's break down kind of the difference in wisdom and understanding. Wisdom is forward thinking. It's like collecting all the information you can and knowing the best way to proceed. I talk about it often. It's like if you're going to, to Myrtle Beach, there's lots of ways to go to Myrtle Beach, but if you talk to your phone and say, take me to Myrtle Beach, it will tell you the most direct way to get around the traffic, the problems, direct. That's wisdom, taking information and knowing the best. Understanding is looking back and figuring out the why. Like, okay, something happened? What, why did that happen? Somebody acted that way and, and treated me that way? Why? It's not just snap judgments about that's a bad person. No, let me understand why they act that way. 
and why I went through that. Wisdom's out there. Understanding is back there. Let's continue with Solomon. Verse 18, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They don't know what makes them stumble. So let's talk about a couple things here. First of all, the word righteous. If you haven't been church in a while and you're like, oh, righteous, self-righteous, looking down on me. No, no, no. The word righteous is about right standing. This means, like, say less over here. I'm friends with less. But say during the week, I was in town. I saw Cindy. She started to talk to me. I was like, I don't have time. Just avoid her. Just scoff at her. She goes home. She's like, Les, Pastor Matt, he was so mean. Uh, I, can't, I can't even take. She said, Pastor Matt just totally just hurt my feelings. And Les is like, he did what? Next time I go to Les, our relationship is not in right standing because I have done something to hurt him. So with God, simply God's saying, I want you to be righteous. I want you to be in right standing with me. Let's get the sin out of the way. Let's get the junk out of the way, the apathy out of the way, so we can be in right standing. So right here, Solomon is saying, when you are in right standing, doesn't mean you're perfect, but when you are in right standing, healthy relationship with God, the path you're going to walk on will be bright. Literally, you'll be able to see where to go. Here's an example. Back uh, at our old house, we had, we had our backyard with three dogs, and dogs there would do what dogs do. They'd leave little piles. Okay, so at night, sometimes they have to go to our, our building in the back of the yard. You know, if I try to navigate that without a flashlight, it's going to be bad news. I'm walking out there. What, what was that? Oh, I know what that was. Okay. But if I would flick the light on, poof, the backyard is lit up. Easy. I can navigate Miss the, the pitfalls, get to the building, get back, no issues. I don't, my shoes don't smell when I get back. So literally, Solomon is saying, if you're in right standing with God, your path will be bright and you can see where to navigate. Is that good news or what? That is great news. I want that. Because the flip side says here, the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. Have you ever got up in the middle of the night and you're like, you know, I think I can make it to the kitchen without turning the lights on. You start walking out there, and suddenly you didn't realize that that piece of furniture wasn't exactly where you thought. Wham! You hit it, and you're like, I'm not in right standing right now. <laughs> it's like you're saying something. You're thinking something because you just broke your toe because you stubbed it. That is how it is for the wicked. And remember, the wicked aren't just like the bad people, the Hitlers, the whatever. The wicked are people that are not in right standing with God. They're the people not trusting Jesus as their leader, walking through life in the dark. Who wants that? I want my path lit up. It says the righteous, their path is lit up. I want that. So we continue. Verse 20, my son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart for their life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. I, I love some words in there about like health, light. Here's, here's my picture. You're sitting on that front porch. Let's just say with grandpa. You know, there with grandpa. You're on a swing or two chairs, and you're like, okay, grandpa, you know, t tell me about relationships. Tell me about money management. Tell me about handling stress in life. And grandpa's like, oh, I got some things to share with you. And you're like, oh, hang on a second. You're texting somebody. You're scrolling through social media. And he's like, wait a second, I, I, I thought you were listening. He said, uh, I'm, I'm trying to listen. I know you have wisdom, but actually I'm not paying attention. But Psalm and Sarah there, pay attention to what I say. Understand the truths in this are real. They are accurate. They are useful. But for you, they have no value if you're not paying attention. So we need to pick up from Solomon. He's saying, pay attention to what I'm saying here. He has built up through 22 verses now to verse 23, which simply says, above all else, above all else. Well, okay, Grandpa, you about to say something big. Above all else, the, the wise man Solomon that the queen was coming to talk to, he's saying, above all else, guard your heart, for it's the wellspring of life. I'm like, okay, that's... 
interesting, but I don't exactly understand it. It definitely catches my attention. I want to know more about it. What, is, what does that mean? You're saying above all else in my heart and a wellspring. Let's try to understand this because, first of all, when somebody says above all else, I pay attention. Warren Buffett at lunch, above all else, I'm paying attention to what he says. But the core of it, our heart, you know, in the Bible, the concept of heart is referenced over 800 times. And this is talking about your passion, like the light in your eyes, the fire in you, your vigor. You know it when you don't have it. Maybe you've seen this in an athlete. You're watching a game and you're like, where's that guy's head today? Where's that, that girl who's playing? She's not in this thing, is she? And you're like, where, where's her fire? Where's her passion? You know, her heart has been kind of dislocated. Or maybe you're, you're in life and you're like, oh, man, the way things have been going, the relationships, the financial stress, the disappointments, and somebody looks at you and you're like, Kevin, man, where's your fire? Man, I saw fire last year, like passionate fire. Where's it at? And you're like, you don't know how to explain it, but what you're really saying is something got a hold of your heart and it's been damaged. It's been hurt. So in Proverbs chapter 3, Verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him or acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. God cares so much about your heart. He wants you to trust him with your heart. But if you're like me, you think you can figure it out? You're like, no, yeah, I, I got it. I got it. I'm down, but I, I could figure it out. I could just man up and get through this. Or I'm in that situation, and I'll just, I'll just gut it out, and I can get through it. And I'll, I'll find a way. I'll, I'll self-medicate. I'll do it with food or drugs or alcohol or something else. I'll, I'll do it, and I'll get my vigor back. And God says, no, no, I want you to trust me in everything. Trust me with your heart. Don't lean on your own ways. And it ties into one of my favorite verses in Jeremiah 29, 13, where it says, you'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You're like, all of it? God says, all of it. I want us to be in right standing, and I want you to trust me with all of your heart. And that's where growth happens, because in those spots where it's tough to trust him, and, and you're single, and you're still looking, and you're like, I'm trusting you, and your finances, you're, you're tense, you're like, God, I'm going to give, and I'm going to try, and your, your relationships, you're like, God, I, I'm trying to get past this temper thing, I don't know, but I'm trusting you. And God says, trust me, I have a plan for you. Well, when we think about our physical heart and our spiritual heart, I, I want to help you understand this better because um, has anybody in here ever either had a heart attack or felt like you were having some type of heart attack? Raise your hand. I, I really want to see. Okay. We, we got some people who have had that. That is scary. And here's some of the reasons why physically we feel like that. Granted, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. But here's atherosclerosis, okay? If I'm not saying that exactly right, I'm sorry. But atherosclerosis, it is the hardening of the arteries due to accumulated cholesterol plaques and scarring in the artery walls. You're like, Pastor Matt, why are we having a medical lesson? Here's why. Because just like your physical heart can have all that happening where the plaque and junk gets in there and makes it smaller, your spiritual heart is the same way. You understand when you hear God's word and truth and you're like, nah. Or you're like, hmm, that sounds interesting. And on Monday you're like, nah. Trust in God with all my heart. Trust in him in relationships and my finances and the way I live. No, God, I'm, 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 not, I'm not taking your word and applying it to my life. I'm a clap and say, hey, that was a good thing you said, but that's not for me. What you're doing is your spiritual heart is getting clogged up to when you want God to work, things ain't going to flow. The, the second part of why you might have a heart attack is congestive heart failure. That's the inability of the heart to successfully pump blood through the body due to weakness within the heart wall. So literally, this muscle is not strong enough to do what it needs to do. Your spiritual heart's the same way. When you're living in a way that there's sin that's in opposition to God's word, you're damaging your heart. When you're like, Pastor Matt, sexual sin doesn't matter that much. I gotta, I gotta you know, test the market, right, before I get married. Pastor Matt, my, my temper, it doesn't matter that much. I know it said the fruit of the spirit is self-control, but 
that's not really for me. And what you're doing is you're taking truths of God's word and you're not letting them infiltrate your body, your spiritual heart. When you want it to pump, he's like, I want you to work this year, God. And God's like, your spiritual heart is not healthy. It's not ready to pump. The walls have been narrowed. It's not ready to flow. I don't want that in my physical body. I certainly don't want it in my spiritual body. So again, with 423, it says, above all else, guard your heart. It's the wellspring of life. Then how do I get that wellspring? I want that wellspring. Because when I go out to a Crowder's Mountain and, uh, and hike or run a trail, uh, if you've ever done that and you come back down and they got like a pump down there by the station where you can go over there and pump it and get some fresh water and you're like, yes, I want that. I don't know about you, there's been times I've come down all hot and sweaty, went over there and turned the thing. It's like, where's the water flow? It's not there. The wellspring is not working. Or maybe worse, I pump it and I hear something come like, yes, and out comes brown, rusty, dirty. I'm like, ooh, I'm not drinking that. I don't want nothing from that wellspring. The same thing with your heart. It's the wellspring of your life. If it's not flowing, or worse, if it's flowing with junk, and Solomon's saying, hey, above all else, you better guard that thing because what it's pumping is how you're going to be living, and that's how everything rises and falls on the health of your heart. Jesus talked about this many times. Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they'll see God. Matthew 6, 21, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 15, 18, the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. Matthew 22, 37, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. The reality is your spiritual heart is your authentic self. You can put all these nice things outside, say, actually, I'm looking good. Man, I got a nice big Bible. I got a vision t-shirt. I got all these things. I'm sitting in church. But you know deep inside, your wellspring isn't well. Jesus said, that's not going to work in my kingdom. Well, you know, your physical heart, it pumps blood through miles of arteries and veins. It takes blood to many organs that are not vital. You understand, like your hand gets chopped off. That's a bad day, but you're not going to die as long as you contain that right. Your leg is cut off. It's, it's not vital. It's important, but this heart in here, you've got to protect it. You've got to treat it like it needs to be in a safe box that you're going to protect so that life doesn't beat away at it, so that it is healthy. It's your wellspring. So here's where we're going. I'm going to give you three points before we finish up about why guard your heart, and then next week I'm going to talk about how you guard your heart. So I hope you get these in there. Number one, why you guard your heart. First of all, your heart is extremely valuable. I hope you are picking up on that from me, that there are things that me and Meg put in this box that are valuable. There's another box I own. It's a big blue box with wheels. I roll it out every Wednesday night, and a big truck comes and dumps it on Thursday morning. We don't guard that box at all. It's a trash box, okay? It's got trash in it. Nothing valuable. This box, very valuable. Your heart is extremely valuable. Second reason you guard your heart, because your heart is the source of everything you do. Don't you think you can just fight through it? When your heart isn't pumping, flowing, your spiritual heart, or it's pumping junk, you can't just fight through that. You need to change that by guarding your heart, because it's the source of everything you do. And then number three, because your heart, and I know you, you agree with this, your heart is constantly under attack. It's constantly under attack. That's why you feel these, these margins cl clenching in. You're like, oh, Matt, I hope you talk one week about time because my time is so tight. It's squeezing life out of my heart. Emotionally, I can't take one more thing going wrong. I'm going to snap. Or maybe financially, God, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. My relationships are all messed up. I'm feeling all this. Your heart is under attack. So you need to be different. And in fact, I want you to be like J.J. McCarthy. Anybody know who J.J. McCarthy is? J.J. McCarthy plays football for the Michigan Wolverines. And last Monday night, woo, that game didn't start off so good for J.J. He just about threw an interception. They, they were fumbling balls. Things were going wrong. But you look at J.J., and J.J. rises above circumstances. J.J. was like, whew, let's take a deep breath. We're going to make it. 
the wellspring that flows out of this young man, he was in the game throwing a ball, and after the game, they won, and he's like, we did it, y'all, we did it, because people looked at him and said, you got something in you, you got fire in your eyes that you didn't let anybody steal it. So this is your story too, that you have fire in your eyes, you have passion in your life, you have purpose behind what you're doing when you have the wellspring of life because you guarded your heart. So to go back to where we started about great advice, wouldn't you like some great advice to start this year? So you get to next, you know, New Year's Eve, and you're like, wow, man, 24, God did have more for me this year, and I didn't miss it. And don't think there's, there's anything in particular you have to do to qualify for this. This is available for everybody here, watch it online. If you're watching this months from now, you still qualify if you have Jesus as your leader. Because when you talk about advice, I'll say, I didn't want Warren Buffett here today. I don't need that. I need this advice. I need advice from my heart so that it pumps pure water out. So that my heart doesn't have atherosclerosis and congestive heart failure, but my spiritual heart is pumping and I'm guarding it. And so again, the bottom line, above all else, above all else, Leah, guard that heart. Bobby, above all else this year, guard your heart. Bethany, guard your heart. Hey, guard your heart. You're watching online. Jeanette, I know you're not feeling great today. Guard your heart, girl. I know she's saying, preach it, pastor. I hear you. I hear you. Above all else, guard your heart. It's the wellspring of life. And so next week... I'm going to teach you how to guard your heart. And then the next week, we're going to talk about margins with time. And another week, we'll talk about margins with your emotions and your money and your relationships. This is where you need to be. Six weeks in a row, this is where you need to be. And like I said at the start, this isn't just about you. This is about you helping somebody else grow in their walk. Get somebody here with you. Get them to watch today's message. Get them to come back next week. Tell them we'll love on them. We're not going to rail away at them. We're going to walk with them and help them on the journey. That's what we do as visionaries, okay? So close your eyes a minute. And I want you to be encouraged that this is for you. There's nothing in this that, um, again, that has to pre-qualify you for this. that the gift of Jesus, of eternal life, is for everyone. I love that because in 1991, I was just an everyone. I was just a young kid that cried out to God and said, God, would you take me? Would you cover me? Would you lead me? And since 1991, I've been walking with God, and he has been there time and time again. And he's there for you too. Even if it doesn't feel like it today, I promise you, he's unchanging, and he wants to be active in your life, but he's not going to force himself on you. So in this moment, if you're here in the room, or you're watching online, or you're watching this days or years from now, you can pray in your heart right now and simply say, God, I need you. I have been far from you, and I want to be in right standing with you. Jesus, I believe you're the only way to heaven. You lived and died and rose from the dead, and you want to be my hero, my savior. And you simply say, Jesus, I'm ready. Today is my day. This is my time to accept you as my savior. I want to live for you. I give you my life. God, you're hearing the cry of all of our hearts this morning, God. We all got things on our mind and in our heart that you're stirring this morning because, God, we want this guarding of our heart. We want a wellspring. We want joy and peace and victory in our lives. And, God, you've got great things in store for us. So, Father, I thank you that you're faithful. I thank you that you're with us wherever we're at on this journey today. God, you are awesome. You're the awesome God of creation. You want to guard us. You want to lead us. 
do that. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. What I'd like to do is, um, anybody on our care team, if you guys would come up here, Michael, Les and Cindy, Angie over here, Meg come here too, uh, Brian, if I missed anybody, come up here. And just during this last song, you guys even just stand here, worshiping right here. And if you guys want someone to pray with, everybody stand up, everybody stand up. If you want somebody to pray with, come on down here and tap Michael or Brian or Meg or Angie or Cindy or Les. Come on down here and just tap them and say, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Because I need some help as this year's starting. I need somebody to pray with me. I need somebody to listen. I just need to know somebody cares. Whatever you need this morning, come on down. Spend some time with us. Let's worship together. If you need something, let us know.